the signs of gender dysphoria develop very young. Like you can see it in a three-year-old. And by the time they're four, their gender identity is pretty much solidified. So you will see the signs of someone who's not happy with the gender they're born with very little. Actually, that's not true. That is not true. You can suppress Most, it. Their gender expression no, is, is not different. True. Gender all expression the depends on the, the fact. Last, all the science for the last 100 years has shown in boys who, who experience gender dysphoria between two and three, 85% of them simply grow up to be gay. Oh. Guys, I gotta tell you, I absolutely love, love Dr. Field's new show right now i don't know if it's, it's new in the sense that i mean he's had this show for years but he's having conversations that i think should be had on most mainstream liberal media outlets and talk shows like for example the view that claim to represent all sides right uh when they actually really only represent one perspective okay he's actually bringing people together from both sides of the political spectrum that have all different types of opinions and they're having conversations on national TV that we should be having about some of these cultural conversations, these cultural debates and topics that, you know, this country's having, okay? And I absolutely love it. I absolutely love it. And I have a, another video uh, to react to, guys, uh, of this base teacher who is going to set some of these woke activists straight on this debate about um, this... <laughs> far left ideology being pushed in school particularly when it comes to putting things like tampons and boys bathrooms right uh and also teaching gender ideology to kids in school uh again i think this debate and this conversation is absolutely fascinating i want to react to it but first i have to give a disclaimer because if you guys didn't know uh it seems like youtube <laughs> particularly is cracking down on criticizing uh certain groups of people right so i gotta say to the youtube moderators uh criticism is not hate this is commentary on a debate about a culture issue that you should be able to have an opinion on without it being labeled as hate speech this is not a personal attack it's just commentary on cultural issues which again it's a shame that in 2023 i have to actually explain the difference right between that and hate speech but again here we are okay so well, further ado, I, I want to go ahead and, and roll this clip because, I, again, I think this is a fascinating conversation. I recently petitioned my state of Oregon regarding the Menstrual Dignity Act. This was a well-intended bill that was to provide feminine hygiene products in our schools for free. That bill became unreasonable and irresponsible when the verbiage changed that it had to be in female, gender neutral, and specifically boys' bathrooms in all K through 12 schools. $5.5 million is being redirected from the state school fund to provide these products in these bathrooms. Boys do not menstruate. I will not confuse my son and tell him that boys menstruate when he does not have a uterus and he will never ovulate. Well, the new statewide Oregon bill has parents like Sherry asking why tampons in boys' bathrooms are a necessary expense. Now, she's joining us here today, and we're talking $5.5 million to put these in all the bathrooms yes. across the state? Yes, K through 12. Bruh, $5.5 million. $5.5 million to put tampons in a boy's bathroom. Again, this is what they're wasting taxpayer dollars on, guys. <laughs> Again, it's just ridiculous. And that $5.5 million, it's a carve out. So it comes out before they distribute the money to the schools after that. And so considering everything that uh, did, has happened since the pandemic and beyond, achievement gaps, um, just education in general, where Oregon falls across all the states for education, the idea of taking this money out for f feminine hygiene products, which is available in schools, you may have to ask for them. They're in the office and stuff like that, but they've always been available. Do you do you know what percentage of the budget this is for Oregon's educational budget? Uh, it doesn't matter. <laughs> it doesn't matter what percentage it is. It's five point five million dollars. Imagine what you could do with five point five million dollars. Okay, you can give some I don't know free SAT courses. Okay, to these you know um, 
underserved, underprivileged kids, okay, who need to have better SAT scores so they can get in good schools. There's so many different things you can do for with $5.5 million that is much more useful and makes much more sense than putting the tampons in boys' bathrooms. Again, these people, they love to waste taxpayer dollars on the most ridiculous stuff and then try to justify it by saying, well, it's only a small part of your budget. Well, that's the reason why the federal budget is so bloated, because you have so many different things that we're spending money on, ridiculous stuff, and people justify it by saying, well, it's just a small part of your budget. Well, when you start doing a whole bunch of it, right, when you have, you know, tens of thousands of million dollar expenses for silly stuff, uh, that adds up, right? All that stuff adds up. All I know, I don't know the percentage, but I do know that it equates to 30 teachers a year. 30 teachers. Um, this is less than one tenth of one percent of the total budget. Don't matter. We could matter. use 30 teachers a year. They could 30, use teachers. 30 teachers. I mean, which, I which is true. So I we think, should increase the education budget. I think that math, though, avoids the central issue. Right. Yeah. And the other side of that, if you want to talk about the funding, I would ask why couldn't the funding come out of um, for menstrual products out of OHP, um, the Oregon Health Plan? versus coming out of the education budget, which is meant to educate our children. But is it commonsensical to put these products in every yes. bathroom? I, I want to give... <laughs> you know why Dr. Phil asked that question? Because <laughs> he know it don't make no damn sense. He know how ridiculous this is. That's why he asked that question. Is it commonsensical to actually really do this? Does this really make sense? Of course it doesn't make sense, Dr. Phil. You know that. Two, a two-part response here. First of all, I mean, like we saw in Tennessee, trans boys do need to use restrooms. Trans boys can menstruate, and that's okay. And second, if people are running out of menstrual products, which um, I went to a school that provided them, it happens all the time, um, a boy could just run to the bathroom and grab it for his friend. So this is actually a law that benefits everyone, including cisgender women. But well, see, here's the problem. <laughs> the problem is, is that trans boys biologically are girls okay now youtube that is a fact okay it's not hate speech it's a fact okay i'm just stating facts therefore they shouldn't be allowed to use the boys restroom in the first place okay they, they just shouldn't be allowed to because they're biologically not boys okay uh using a bathroom is a biological function so we should have people use bathrooms based off biological functionality this is really not that hard to understand it's really not that hard to understand it's also a law that can be abused because we've already in the female bathrooms where it does make sense for them to be they're putting them all over the walls <laughs> boys you know i don't have any firsthand experience but there's already been stories from parents that have come to me talking about boys wearing them on their ears and so and should we also ban toilet paper from bathrooms no no we should ban toilet paper because everybody has a butthole right boys and girls both use toilet paper but the point is that uh, you already have these products being put in women's or girls' bathrooms and <laughs> they, they are wasted, you know, girls play with them or whatever, you know. Um, so imagine what happens when you put them in the boys' restrooms where they don't actually really need them, okay? What are they going to do with them? They're going to play with them. It's going to cause more problems. It's just a waste of money. It doesn't make sense. It's ridiculous. If a so-called trans boy needs menstrual products, uh, they can just go to the front office and <laughs> go get one, Okay. Uh, it's really that simple. It is really that simple. Oh, but why do we put them in places where they have a higher propensity of being misused? It just doesn't make sense. So to add to your point, this is really important for lower social economic um, schools. Transgender boys who might not have their own money to go buy tampons. If they're provided free in the bathroom, it's it's a huge plus. Men do not menstruate. Only women <laughs> menstruate. Now, you can call yourself Cis whatever you want. Cis men don't menstruate, but trans men do menstruate. No, Same they as don't. non-binary people. <clears throat> Only women. Menstruating is not exclusive yes, to it cis is. women. No, it's not. Yes, it is. So explain you're, to me as to why you're, my body menstruated are, at some point. If your chromosomes are XX and you're young, you menstruate. <laughs> if you're XY, you don't. Correct, but what about trans men and non-binary? We're not excluding men. a whole group of they're, people They're women who dressed menstruate. as men. I love Yeah, so... Again, YouTube, <laughs> this is just a fact, okay? Not hate speech, <laughs> that's just a fact. What he's stating is that, look, um, boys are boys, right? Biologically, girls are girls, biologically, boys do not ministrate, therefore, they don't need these products. Like, it's really that simple, right? He cut through all the BS, all the language, and he just kept it 100. He kept it 
hey, this is biology. This is how it works, <laughs> right? And I absolutely love it because that's the only thing that needs to be said. Using the bathroom is a biological function. Therefore, we should organize bathrooms based on biology. It's really that simple. I don't care what you identify as. I don't care what you think you are, you believe you are. You are what you are from a biological perspective. That is how we should organize society. It's really that simple. It's really that simple. Well, Ashri, you have issues with Eli's gender unicorn as a teaching tool, right? Yes. Tell us what we're looking at here. Well, you were looking at TSER's fantastic little gender unicorn. It teaches students of all ages about gender identity, expression, and attraction. It teaches them that everything is on a spectrum and they should be able to explore and express themselves. Wow, incredible stuff. Let's rewind and look at this. This is what they're pushing in schools as facts, right? This is what they're pushing in schools. This is what they're teaching. They're, they're, this is indoctrination, my guy. Like, it just, it just is. I don't know what else do, do you call it. Why do you need to talk to kids about physical attraction? Why do you need to have conversations with kids about emotional attraction? Why do you need to have conversations with them about gender identity or gender expression? Why do you need to have conversations with these kids about this stuff in school? Now, if parents want to have conversations with their kids about this, hey, ain't really much I can say about that, right? It is what it is. But this... They're saying, no, they, they, teachers need to be talking to kids. I mean, th this is just straight up left-wing ideology. That's what it is. And they, they, they think that, oh, well, if, if you don't agree with this, you're some type of bigot, right? If you're like, nah, we shouldn't be pushing this into some type of bigot. Now, again, if you replace this with the Bible, right? Say, hey, no, 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 this is what we should be teaching in school, right? But the Bible, do you think these people would agree with it? Right. Do you think disagreement with that would be labeled hate speech? Do you think that anybody that ever say is hate speech to say, you know what? The Bible should be taught in school. Right. We shouldn't be teaching kids religious ideology in school. Do you think that anybody would say that's hate speech? No, they wouldn't. Right. But if you but if you say that, hey, you know, maybe we shouldn't teach gender ideology in school. All of a sudden you're 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 a bigot. Right? You're hateful. Again, it's just the double standard here is just absolutely amazing to me. It, it just it really blows my mind. Everything that aligns with the left, regardless of what it is, what they say, is green light, fair game. They can say whatever they want about conservatives, Christians, Trump supporters, right? They can say whatever they want. Never label hate speech. But as soon as conservatives or people on the right just simply criticize a left-leaning ideology, right? We're just having a public debate. We're just talking about it. We're just trying to have a conversation about it. Where we say, hey, we disagree with this. Oh, well, you're, you're being hateful, right? Again... I'm just, I'm a little pissed off, okay? I'm a little pissed off about this, okay? This is bigger than this video, but again, the standards are just not being applied equally across the board. And and you say that this is appropriate uh, <laughs> beginning in kindergarten. I mean, I, I've worked with parents who brought it into preschools even. Um, I, I see you nodding your head, but I'm sure you're very excited about it. And um, I, I do want to point out that there are plenty of trans youth, myself included, who have come out at young ages. If I had this as a tool when I was eight years old, I would have been so much more comfortable with myself. I would have known who I was and that I wasn't alone. Just to piggyback on that, the signs of gender dysphoria develop very young. Like you can see it in a three-year-old. And by the time they're four, their gender identity is pretty much solidified. So you will see the signs of someone who's not happy with the gender they're born with very little. Actually, that's not true. <laughs> it's not true. You can suppress Most, it. Their gender expression no, is different. True. Gender all expression the depends on the, the last. All the signs for the last 100 years has shown in boys who, who experience gender dysphoria between two and three, eighty-five percent of them simply grow up to be gay. Oh, I love that you're saying this. And the study, other five, exactly don't interrupt, which one it don't is. This interrupt is, this is, and be rude. I will, the other five you don't think I'm dismissing an entire group be of people as being rude. And then there are one or two percent. The transgender dysphoria persists into adulthood. At the age of four, a child is not going to know what emotional attraction means versus physical attraction. No, children, and it is, children do get crushes. This, no, no. this is a completely age-inappropriate <sighs> 
product to be putting in Fact. front of children and, and hijacking this unicorn concept. You, I, say, I'm saying you know, ain't it crazy how this teacher is more based in science? This is a fifth grade teacher. He's more based in science, right? <laughs> than this so-called physician, right? This so-called physician. Again, I got questions. <laughs> I got questions about your medical degree. I got questions about, you know, uh, are you really following the science or are you following woke ideology? <laughs> so it seems to me that your woke ideology takes more preference. You have more preference towards that than you do towards what you actually learn in school. But again, it's just amazing that a teacher, a teacher, a fifth grade teacher has a more accurate understanding of biology, okay, and how this stuff works than a physician. He's like, yeah, look, these kids are young, okay? Even if these kids are expen experiencing gender dysphoria or some type of confusion about who they are, most of them, a vast majority of them, grow out of it. They grow out of it. Again, we had this stuff figured out a long time ago. <laughs> you know, tomboys, right? You know, little girls that like to, you know, play with boy toys or to dress up like boys or to be around the boys. We called them tomboys, <laughs> right? We didn't say that they were actually boys or that they were girls born in the wrong body. No, we said you're a tomboy, okay? Which basically meant that you're, you're a girl, a biological girl, who just simply liked, uh, you know, girl things, boy things. It's really that simple, right? We didn't say that you were born in the wrong body until just recently. We started saying that, which again, it's, it's just fascinating how things evolve over time. You I, say, I'm saying it every age. You, Gender you say is an every three, age four years old and you say 12. I say the signs develop young, but kids between four and six just can't comprehend that so there's the any other reality right than what they see on TV or what their families expose So you disagree to. that the unicorn conversation should be no, held at I, three or four? I think it should be um, age appropriate. Like you don't sit down a five-year-old and be like, listen, you can, you know. The gender unicorn also isn't about the child themselves. It's about what could be. It's about possibilities it's of in gender. It's indoctrination, right? That, that is what it's about. It's curriculum in school districts. So are you saying we shouldn't ever present any um, children with books about um, gay men? I'm yeah, I'm, I'm, yeah. <laughs> that's exactly what I'm saying. Why? Why would you, why, I mean, what, what, what would be the purpose, right? What's the point? They can learn about that later in life, okay? Just because kids aren't learning about uh, homosexuality at five doesn't mean that they're going to grow up to be bigots, right? That, that's not what it means. They don't need... That's a conversation that they need to have with parents. Again, growing up, um, we all know that the conversations about sex, you know, the conversation, the birds and the bees, that was had by parents with their kids, it wasn't had by teachers. It wasn't taught in school, okay, in elementary school. Yeah, I mean, it's sex ed in high school or whatever, but it wasn't something that was being taught to five-year-olds. Five Again, back in the day, right, not too long ago, we used to say it was weird <laughs> to want to have a conversation about the birds and the bees with kids, but now all of a sudden, want to have a conversation about the birds and the bees uh, with children, it's totally fine as long as you frame it uh, as, you know, hey, this is a part of gender ideology. I'm saying that your gender unicorn concept is a completely unethical practice in our school systems to children, and it should be eliminated. Should, it well, is right tell, now. Tell that to the tens of thousands of schools that are using yeah. it. Why is it? Yeah, I mean, it doesn't matter. Tens of thousands of you, they're wrong for using it. It's, it's ridiculous. It's crazy. This is why you need school choice, right, in homeschooling. This is why, you know, Republicans should be focused a lot more on that. That is what they actually really should be focused on a lot more in Congress, more than anything. Homeschooling, school choice. Getting these kids out of public schools because the public schools have been taken over by woke ideologues like this person right here. And it's not even just about this conversation on gender expression and identity being taught to kids. Kids are failing. Kids don't know how to read, they don't know how to write, they don't know how to do math. They don't know anything, right? They don't know anything. The only thing they know is how to be woke liberal activists for the Democrat Party, right? That's that's all they know. So again, th this conversation is bigger than just the gender ideology thing when it comes to public schools and how they're failing children. Um, again, Republicans, that should be the number one key core issue that Republicans are focused on. And honestly, that's the issue that Republicans can win on. That's a slam dunk issue they can win on. 
I wish Republicans would come out here and talk more about how schools are failing children and how we need to do better at educating them by eliminating this nonsense from schools and just focusing on making schools better, right? That That is, again, something I think the Republican Party got to do a way better job at. Um, but, you know, hey, like I said, I mean, we don't really have too many <laughs> Republicans in Congress nowadays. They're using it. You've got this free PDF that is people are downloading irresponsibly, and it should not be in the school system. One of the yeah. So, hey, <laughs> you know, hopefully, hopefully, uh, just you know, commenting on this conversation is is not labeled hate speech. Um, I I think that it's important for us to be able to come together and to have these type of conversations where we can you know you know, agree to disagree or whatever, right, without somebody saying that it, it is hateful, okay, um, because I respect their opinion, even though I disagree with it, I respect it, that is your opinion, even though I think you're wrong, but I don't think their opinion is hateful towards everybody else, just because they have a different opinion than me, okay, but, uh, yeah, as you guys can see there, uh, it's just amazing how you have people who truly do believe that this stuff is, uh, appropriate for kids to be learning in school and spending money on <laughs> putting tampons in a boy's bathroom. Again, insane stuff. It really is. Let me know what you guys think. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. Most importantly, share a black conservative perspective.